good super spy is always in demand. And Double O Monkey was no exception. Betsy had asked Double O Monkey to keep an eye on Steve. He disappears every day and won't tell me where he's going. And Steve never keeps secrets, so this one must be big. <laughs> I tried following him myself, but he always catches me. Guess I'm not as good a super spy as you. <laughs> Betsy was worried that Steve was making her another good luck gift for her dance recital. <laughs> At the last recital, Steve baked Betsy a cake. The time before that, he brought flowers. Steve's good luck gifts had a way of going bad. Betsy wanted Double O Monkey to follow Steve and blow the lid off his potentially messy plot. Because whatever Steve was cooking up, she wanted to be prepared. Steve, he'd come through the park. Double O Monkey was on his tail. George, what are you doing here? Huh? Oh, okay. Uh, well, cool. Gotta run. George wanted to keep Steve in his sights. But if George could see Steve, Steve might see George again. Uh -huh. And then he remembered. When Double O Doggy needed to follow someone without being seen, he used a tracking device that made a sound only he could hear. Huh. George didn't have anything only monkeys could hear. <laughs> but he did have a tracking device that didn't look like a tracking device. A key ring for my favorite soccer team, the Metropolis Ringers? <laughs> this is so cool! Thanks, George! <laughs> <laughs> Listen to that team spirit! <laughs> Now, Double O Monkey had two ways to stay on the trail. Sight. <laughs> and sound. Cities are noisy places. <gasps> Double O Monkey couldn't hear or see Steve anywhere. Hmm. Luckily, super spies used more than two senses. He'd use his nose. But there were a lot of sniffs to sniff. Opening day of the museum's aviation show. And if there's one thing monkeys, dogs, and men with yellow hats are amazed by, 
its flying machines. <laughs> George! Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, that's a propeller. Propellers move a plane by pulling air in through the front of the propellers and blowing air out the back. No, George, that's not how you use it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hundley was enjoying a Hundley-sized air show. My great-grandfather flew a balloon from Florence to Paris. Aviators from every country went to Paris to race flying machines, like all of these. Oh, oh it would have been great to see that. See it? Hundley wished he could have flown in it. Flying looked almost as exciting as being a lobby dog. Nice souvenir. Have fun? Uh -huh. uh, it sure is hot in here. The air conditioner stopped. Now that Hundley's back, I can leave my post to fix it. Mind helping out? No problem. George, you want to stay here and help Hundley watch the lobby? That fan made a strong wind. George wanted to see how fast the plane would fly using rubber band power plus the wind from the fan. But all Hundley wanted was to do his job and enjoy his balloon. His balloon? He'd let go of the string. George had an idea only a monkey could think of. <laughs> and he knew just where the man kept his fishing pole. <laughs> Meanwhile, the hot room turned Hundley's worries into a dream. Famous British aviator Lieutenant Doxy flew to Paris for the 1909 International Air Show and Race. <laughs> sir! Yes, sir! Descending, sir! Daring bipedal aviator, Mademoiselle Wiseman was also competing. Oh, good to see you again, Doxy. Loser buys winner dinner, like last spring in Vienna. Ooh, isn't that that daring American flyboy, Chuck Monkey? Monkey was the first pilot to fly over the North Pole. Accidentally, but he did it. <laughs> Doxy worried Chuck could win this race. He'd heard it was hard to beat a monkey with a rubber band. And there was the dynamic Leaning Tower team. Ciao, Chuck de Monk! And who was this new competitor? <laughs> I am. When you're friends with scientists, you never know when you might be called for a sciency mission. Like helping chart undersea volcanoes in Hawaii. And 
studying the habits of tropical fish. Now, George had some time to relax. George, can you come out and play? Ah! Huh? This was the first time Ali had shown up for a play date in a box. was out here, who or what was in there? What's in the box? Oh. <laughs> Where'd it come from? Is it for you? Can we open it? Uh. These were all questions that George had, too. Fortunately, he knew someone who knew all the answers. <gasps> Where'd that box come from? <laughs> it was here when I got here. No address? No return address. Hmm. Maybe it fell out of a truck. There's one sure way to find out. <laughs> no, I, George, wait. I, I didn't mean we should open it. Huh? We don't know who it's from or if it's for us. Allie's right. It might have fallen off a delivery truck. Oh. You know what? I'll call the delivery company in town and see if they know anything about it. Lost and found? I'd like to report a package I found in my yard. Oh. A box that big? I'll bet whatever's inside is the most awesome thing ever. It could be anything. Hmm. Huh? <gasps> huh? Oh. Hi, George. Allie. What's in the box? We don't know. A mystery, huh? Yeah, we aren't allowed to open it or move it. All we know is that what's inside is this tall and this wide. <gasps> hey! My goat is this tall. Maybe it's a goat. A goat? Uh -huh. Why would anyone mail a goat? Hmm, mailing an elephant would be too expensive. They weigh a ton. <laughs> <gasps> <laughs> Allie gave George an idea. If they knew how much the box weighed, that would give them another clue about what was inside. 20 pounds. Huh? What weighs 20 pounds that could fit in that box? Oh, I know. 20 pounds is what a 20 pound goat weighs. Huh? huh? I'll show you. Allie's right. A 20-pound goat weighs 20 pounds. <laughs> then again, 20 pounds of anything weighs 20 pounds. So, it could be anything. I keep thinking a 20-pound goat. Maybe because you've been looking at one? If only there was a place you could see every 20-pound thing that would fit in a box that size. <laughs> then he realized there was. <laughs> it was called a store. First, they needed an empty box the same size as the one at home. Good thinking. This way we'll know if a 20 pound thing is too big or too small to fit in the box. Ah. Luckily, the country store had everything. Pillows were the right size. But George needed to find something heavier. Weights could fit too. Definitely more than 20 pounds. spring, George and Allie had a project. A garden. They 
dug holes, planted seeds, watered, and waited until a tiny sprout appeared. <laughs> Before long, they were the proud parents of a healthy, growing garden. Then one day, Allie had some news. It's all up to you now, George. Uh -huh. It turned out, Allie and the Rankins were going on vacation for six weeks. The garden Ooh. was in George's hands. Every morning, he watered and pulled out the weeds so the flowers had room to grow. And then one day, <gasps> flowers started blooming. <laughs> George couldn't wait to send Allie a picture. Someone else was impressed with George and Allie's flowers, too. A deer. <laughs> George had to be careful not to scare the deer away. <laughs> the next morning, George was eager to check his garden. Flowers weren't supposed to go back into the ground, were they? <gasps> His dear friend was back. <gasps> it turned out that the deer liked George's flowers too much. This was horrible. George could just imagine what Allie would say. George didn't know what to do. Then at breakfast, he had an idea. Maybe if George shared his oatmeal, the deer wouldn't want to eat his garden. Deer didn't like oatmeal. Ah. She liked flowers. Ah. It was time to call in an expert. been eating your flowers. <laughs> yep. My mom had the same problem, but last week she built a high fence and they all went way far away. Hmm. There's plenty of grass and wildflowers for them to eat. You just have to keep them out there. Hey, maybe you could build a tall fence too. A really high one they can't jump over. <laughs> Let's see. To buy wood for a real deer-proof fence, we'll need exactly way more money than we've got. So the fence was out. How else could George keep the deer away? <laughs> Only one thing had kept the deer out so far. <laughs> want to stand in the garden all day? <laughs> George had built a scarecrow to keep pigeons away. Maybe he could make a scared deer. <laughs> the more pins people knocked down, the more money would be donated for bobolinks.
so the children were having a practice game before the tournament to get better at knocking down pins. You see, now you can practice with something that doesn't squish or squirt. Oh, good. You're here. We have to cancel the tournament. Cancel the tournament? We have an emergency. Normally, I rack the children's bowling balls and Mr. Berg polishes the shoes. But Mrs. Berg's back has been acting up, so we switched. And now Mr. Berg's fingers are stuck. Ah. I have to drive him to the doctor's. On account of I can't steer with bowling ball hands. Ow. <coughs> there will be no one to hand out shoes or work the concession stand. We can do it. <laughs> We keep all the shoes over here. Oh, let's get you to the doctor before you do any more damage. Don't worry. We'll have things back to normal in no time. You think you can handle the shoes, George? I'll go get the popcorn started. Mr. Berg sure had a lot of shoes. Luckily, George had a lot of hands. The shoes were back in the cubbies. Ah! Hiya, George. <laughs> and just in time, the children's practice round was about to start. This is my first time bowling, but I know I'm going to be good at it because my grandma always tells me how good I am at knocking things down around the house. <laughs> me and my team need shoes. <laughs> George. <laughs> Handing out shoes was easy. Hey there. Popcorn? Oh. Is this a new flavor? It is if you like it. <laughs> Let's make another batch. Where does Miss Berg keep her popcorn? Um. Mm. Hey, wanna watch me get my first strike ever? <laughs> Okay, here I go. Ah! Oops. <sighs> Next time. <laughs> huh? Something was wrong with Allie's shoes. In fact, something was wrong with all the shoes. the shoes wouldn't stay on anyone's feet. This was awful. George had to figure out what was wrong with the shoes, and quick. Hey, George. The Sprout Bowler's reporting for duty. Huh? Wow. Good thing they gave the little kids extra time to practice. <laughs> yep, that shoe is too big for a kid. Most bowlers wear the same size bowling shoes as their street shoes. Little kids probably don't know that. Monkeys didn't know that either. But then monkeys didn't usually wear shoes. Size 10, size 10, and size 7. They could find the shoes quicker if the size numbers were in order. <laughs> ah. The zucchini muffins are ready, George. Your favorite. Are you all right? 
a hurt tooth, huh? <laughs> yeah, you might have a cavity there. We'd better see the dentist. <laughs> oh, I'll grab the muffins. Gnocchi didn't know what language George was speaking, but it wasn't cat. Hi, you two. Hi, Dr. Chu. I'm glad you came in. Don't worry, we'll get rid of your toothache. Oh, this is a model of what your teeth look like. Your incisor teeth bite pieces from food. Your canine teeth hold and tear food apart, and your molars grind food. That's plaque. It contains bacteria. Oh, bacteria are germs. That's right, and these germs feed on the food bits that get stuck in your teeth, especially sugar. The bacteria make acid that can create holes in your teeth, cavities. <laughs> Don't worry. I know you're a good brusher. Fluorite toothpaste usually keeps them away. Dan, can you get George ready? Sure. This way, George. Be a good little monkey patient. <laughs> Go on. You can climb into the chair. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean... Oh. <laughs> okay. This is a saliva ejector. It's like a little vacuum cleaner to keep your mouth dry. And this squirts air and water. Oops. Dr. Chu wants me to take an x-ray to see if you have any cavities. This protects you while I do it. This is a digital sensor. Open. Now, bite down and hold still. Oh, you won't feel anything. It's just like when someone takes your picture. Excellent. Open. Yep, those are your teeth. You sit back and relax. Dr. Chu will be right in. George's toothache kept him up all night. He sure hoped the dentist could find the problem. George remembered that spaceship. He and Gnocchi rode it through his body to find germs like toots that made him sick. <laughs> Maybe they could find out what was making his tooth hurt. George wondered if all cats could drive as well as Gnocchi. This felt squishy. It had to be his tongue. Creatures looked familiar to George. They seemed a lot like Toots the Germ. <laughs> George loved visiting the firehouse. There were so many things that made noise. <laughs> But today, George was being a very, very quiet little monkey. Because the firehouse band was rehearsing for the annual pancake breakfast. Hold it, hold it, everybody. This music.
music's kind of, mm, I don't know, lacking in something. Yeah, like oomph and pizzazz. Exactly. Oh, we'll get it. Let's just try it from the top. And a one, and a two. George was doing a pretty good job of being Shh. quiet. So far. Wow. George, you solved it. That sounded great. You sure did. We needed some bang with our bounce. Nothing like the cymbals to add pizzazz to music. Hey, how about playing the cymbals with us at the pancake breakfast, George? <gasps> You're gonna love them. The sound comes from the vibrations moving through the metal when... <laughs> <laughs> He's way ahead of you. You ready to try playing along with us? Okay, let's do it. And a one and a two. <laughs> Hold on, George. George! George! <laughs> the music's played in beats of four. Listen. One, two, three, four. And on the fourth beat, you clang the cymbals. One, two, three, clang. One, two, three, clang. Got it? <laughs> okay, here we go. And a one, and a two. <laughs> one, two, three, now. Great. Two, three, now. <gasps> You've got it. Hey. Big finish, George. <laughs> wow. Terrific. Sounds great. That was beautiful. Practice as much as you can, and you'll knock them out at the concert tomorrow. <laughs> George got so excited, he forgot about the one, two, three part. Mr. Zubel, this is Pippin. Hey there, Hunley. I'm uh, just wondering if everything's okay. Huh? All that racket? What? The noise? The noise? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear you. George is practicing for the pancake breakfast at the firehouse. <coughs> Say, George, is it possible to practice a little more quietly? <coughs> George wanted to cooperate. But those soft little sounds weren't going to cut it. He needed a big, loud... Maybe you should find somewhere else to practice, George. Monkeys love Scotland. It's a country with interesting clothes. <laughs> Fun musical instruments and a monkey's uncle. Step lively, laddies. The Highland Games wait for no man. Uncle Tam. <laughs> That's Loch Ness, Georgie. Loch is Scottish for lake. And a bonny lock she is indeed. Loch Ness? As in Loch Ness Monster? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Don't worry, George. It's just a story. Ah. Well, no man can say for sure. Could just be a story. But on the other hand, for hundreds of years, people have sighted the prehistoric beast that inhabits the deeps of the loch. <laughs> well, maybe we could take in a little monster watching after the Highland Games. <sighs> But George couldn't wait. If there was a Loch Ness Monster, he was going to see it. Even if it meant missing part of the Highland Games. Wow. I can't believe they can throw those giant logs like they're sticks. The caber toss is an old Scottish tradition, and a tradition for our family as well. Amazing. Aye, but there's one way problem. I got myself all practiced and ready, but woke up this morning and my back's a wee bit sore. Uh, oh, I thought the family tradition was to end here and now. But... Then I remembered who was coming. Uh, who? You. Me. The family tradition shall remain unbroken. You, you want me to, you mean I'm gonna throw that tree? Oh, thank you, lad. I'm touched. A dark shape. No, oh, it's just a bunch of birds. But keep looking, Georgie. Oh, uh -huh. Sure, you can go look. George wanted to be the first monkey ever to see the Loch Ness Monster. Hmm. <laughs> 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 uh, That's it, nephew. Oh, you've got the family touch. I can see it sure as day. Uh, well, um... Oh, boy. Monster? You found the Loch Ness Monster. Where? Where, George? I cannot see it. Ooh, look at that, Georgie. Oh, my goodness. It's... it's... <gasps> uh, scuba diver. Oh, that's just Ewan McDonald. He's always diving in the lock. <sighs> well, we better be getting back. Keep a looking, Georgie. George loved the way the Rankins had a special home for each of their animals. The pigs lived in the pig pen. The chickens lived in the chicken coop. And the horses lived in the stable. But George had never seen that pen before. What kind of animal lived in there? Hiya, George! Ah! Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Didn't mean to scare you. Hey, you know what all these are here for? <laughs> People are going to sit on them for the Hoopanny! <laughs> <laughs> Ho, 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 ho. 
George, are you telling me you've never been to a hootenanny before? Uh-uh. Oh, yeah, well, neither have I. But this year, it's at our farm, so I can stay up late and go. And Grandma says there's gonna be music. <gasps> and dancing, even! Ooh! Ow, 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 ow. That night, George couldn't stop thinking about the hoot nanny when he heard ah. a hoot. Huh? Maybe the hoots were here for the hoot nanny. <laughs> Either way, it sounded like an owl, and George had to see it. Where was the hoot coming from? Could it be from inside the jug? It was too dark to see anything. But George sure could hear it. Maybe this jug was an owl's special home. It must be a baby jug owl. George wondered if anyone was taking care of it. He decided he would. He'd keep it warm. He fed it and snuggled it to bed. The jug owl was quiet. It must have fallen asleep. George couldn't wait to tell Allie about it. Ho, ho, ho! An owl, huh? I can't see it. There is an owl in there. Uh-huh. You know, an owl small enough to fit in that jug has got to be a baby. So there's probably a mommy jug owl nearby. Good idea! Maybe she's in the barn in one of Grandma's old jugs. Yep, it's Owlless. The mommy jug owl must be in a different jug. Not in here either. George and Allie were ready to show the Jug Owl family a good time. <laughs> the Jug Owls have had a long day, George. Maybe it's time for the baby to take a nap. George, have you seen my valve oil? Shh. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I didn't know your uh, jug was sleeping. After the nap, George and Allie were ready for more play. <laughs> but we would have seen it fly away. <laughs> To never, ever tell <laughs> the super top secret ingredient <laughs> in great, great Grandpa Bernie's <laughs> banana bread. <laughs> secret handshake. <laughs> okay. The super secret ingredient in great great grandpa Bernie's banana bread is almond butter. Mm hmm. It keeps it moist and nutty. I think the Rankins will love it. First, we mix the dry ingredients one teaspoon baking powder and one of salt. Hit it. 
Now sift. <laughs> okay. When you're done, we'll combine that with this bowl of butter and eggs and mix. Oh. Hmm. Where is it? <laughs> well, to make Grandpa Bernie's banana bread, you need a very special tool. <sighs> ah, I know. Found it. This was handed down from great-grandfather Bernie to my grandfather, who gave it to my dad. His mixer. Ooh. Hey, do you want to do the mixing, George? <gasps> <laughs> okay, you're on. Give it a crank. <laughs> hmm, hang on. Looks like Grandpa's hand mixer has mixed its last banana bread. Well, Luke and Ada probably sell one just like it in their store. George, do you mind squeaking that mixer a little less? It's a bit... Uh-oh. Just like little monkeys sometimes visited the doctor, cars sometimes visited the repair shop. Uh, sounds like you could use a checkup. Uh, you seem to have a problem with lubrication, like... Uh, you hear that? Squeaks. You see, the two metal parts in that hinge are rubbing against each other. That's what gives you a squeak. Now, your car has lots of moving parts. To keep them running smoothly, you need one magic ingredient. <laughs> Oil. <laughs> your car has a way of keeping itself oiled. But if it runs out of oil... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Why, sure you can oil it. Uh, just put a drop on the hinge. Ooh, ah. Yep, no more squeaks. Mm. Ah, the mixer. Ah. Ah, I see your problem. Whoa. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Good idea, George. But we'll need to use cooking oil for this. We just need a teeny tiny bit. Uh-huh. Okay, only put a drop on the gears. Um, I think some got on the gears. <laughs> Hey, we fixed it! Okay, let's do some mixing. When you know big stars, even small big stars, you sometimes get invited to private rehearsals. And you can bring your friends. Come up and say hi if you want to. Great show, Mr. Teckle. Amazing. <laughs> Just need to paint the ramps and we're ready for tonight. I'd be happy to help if you like. Me too. Anything for a fella dachshund lover. That's right kind of you. <laughs> I'll need a place to keep my dogs. Can't have paint spattered pups. <laughs> you want to look after them, George? <laughs> Terrific! Ha <laughs> ha
Here are their leashes if you want to take them for a walk. <laughs> we'll be back to get them before showtime tonight, okay? No wonder the dogs were so skilled. They never stopped practicing. Though, some parts of the act still needed work. <laughs> An apartment was no place for rehearsals. <laughs> if only George knew a spot where dachshunds stayed calm and quiet. He did. The lobby. It was the perfect wiener dog habitat. But how could he keep them there? Maybe that old gate could help. Hundley was amazed. The monkey had created a wiener wonderland. The doxies had run out of water. Hundley was happy to have his guests enjoy the entire lobby. <laughs> if only they would stay there. <laughs> they had to get those doxies back. But first, George wanted to know how many he needed to catch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight leashes in all, which meant they had to find eight missing dogs. <laughs> but where would all those performing dogs go? many melons. <laughs> Hundley didn't want the doxies to run off again. What luck! It was a big crate. <laughs> Even performing doxies couldn't escape from there. One, two, three. The city could be a hectic place for both man and monkey. Hmm. Looks like the traffic light is out. Whew. Home sweet home, George. Ready for breakfast? <laughs> Uh-huh. Yes. No. Maybe. Oh, okay. Right. Bye. Oh. Uh. Whoa. I'll get that. The good news is the carpet cleaners are coming today. The bad news is they were supposed to come tomorrow. Plus, one person is moving out. Someone else is moving in. Two apartments are being renovated, and the air conditioning on the roof is being fixed. Oh. All right, folks. <gasps> Keep those knees high. Oh, and did I mention the Senior Citizens Hiking Club is practicing for a big climb? 
Uh, hang on! It looks like we need to get more eggs. Uh, by the way, have either of you seen Hunley? I sure could use his help. I haven't seen him. You want me to get more eggs while you look for Hunley? Good thinking, George. Looks like they need all the help they can get. I'll be right back. George was sure he'd seen Hundley go into the box. This way, gentlemen! Gently, gently! Easy does it! This way! George, this is Bruno the Great. He's a magician who's moving into our building. Salutations, my simian friend! Well, what do we have here? Amazing! Ooh. Thank you! Thank you! Enjoy, yes. Isn't he the greatest? Now if only he could make some confusion disappear. <laughs> Katsooks! My bunnies! Don't worry, Bruno. I'll give you a hand. Uh officer could make the traffic flow so orderly. Buford! Where did you scamper off to? <gasps> Egad! Florence! The lobby needed to be orderly too. Maybe George could help. <laughs> 